you guys need to contact the Manatee uh, County, the Sarasota Manatee County government to see what are the codes in the house. Basically, in all the things I was mentioned before, plumbing, mechanical access, existing building, fuel gas, energy conservation, that a lot of uh, equipment are building now to help you to save of this. What's making a house breathe? The proper uh, filtration and outlet for the house is the one that's going to help you. In the bath, the kitchen and exhaust fans, the combustion fans as well. If the chimney is clean and be maintenance, the dryer has been used and clean as well, and it's a fresh air in and outside of the house. Ventilation through correct clean exhaust and central bank uh, outlet, as you can see in the screen. A sign of indoor poor quality are gases or particles that are inside of the house, and um, biological pollutants, asbestos, leaves, household products. Every time that we use a gas inside of the house, it's still inside the, of, uh, in the air, so that's the reason that the ventilation system helps us with this. There are uh, allergic reactions for individuals living in the house as well, sometimes for pets, sometimes for uh, the material of a uh, furniture that we have in the house, and if it's a very humid inside of the house, it's going to start to create mold that exacerbate the allergy relations uh, as well. And it's very good to check mold mildew to feel healthy inside of the house. So far we have some questions, Ilderina, or I can continue. Um, no questions for now, but um, okay. I have a few just um, if we want to discuss on this side. I have, um, I was curious myself if we should have regular inspections for air quality in the home. I don't know if you mentioned that, but do you think that's necessary? Usually, usually if you have an adequate a, a ventilation in the house, this is no mandatory. But when the individuals, when I'm going to start talking about AC, I'm going to be mentioned that there are yearly maintenance that needs to be in the house, and there are certain equipment that the individuals can use to have this as well. But usually the individuals in the house can smell. When somebody's cooking, you can uh, see for how long the gas, gas is going to be inside of the house. Like for example, if you are cooking a friend, Instead of a uh, meat, the stream smell is going to be more inside of the house. So when you are cleaning the bathroom, the gas is going to be more inside. But an air purification will be, it is a case of um, mold. It's necessary that a uh, institute a requirement going to inside of the house to do the testing that you mentioned. Yes. Okay. But in case of mold. Mall is the only requirement to do this kind of testing, and these testings are very expensive as well. Yes. Okay. Thank you. No more questions? Nope, that's it. Thank you. So, how we balance the air pressure in the house, and how it's going to affect every individual living on it, and how we can save money as well. Keep the interior of your house doors open when the rooms are not easy to pay because the circulation of the air helps with that. Another thing is when you have carpet, you can see the difference in the pressure between the rooms. The ventilator that we were talking needs to have a block to transmission of sound or light between the rooms. And they are installed in the ceiling of the house around to the different uh, areas that you that uh, you are having. Filling jumper ducts as well is a form to see the pressure and the air circulation inside of the room that varies according to the ducts that are installed according to the square feet of the house. 
that varies in every house. It depends of the of these uh, measurements, as I mentioned before. Is there an exhaust fan in the bathroom, and does it work? This is the area that we need to concentrate more for uh, to be sustainable. Why? Because the gases that are floating in uh, this particular area of the house. If the fan is not working, we're going to be sick, and the gases that are in the atmosphere of the room are going to be staying longer time every time that we are cleaning and every time that somebody has flushed the toilet as well because the gases came in the air. We need to see if the damper is working, if the dogs are okay, and there are no obstructions. Air circulation in the kitchen. We need to have one of those to help us circulate the air and uh, make the environment more healthy for the individual and don't have the concentration of the gases in that room for so longer periods of time. We are, this is one of the problems that we need to be very, very careful. Mold. Leaky refrigerators drip and in the, uh, the, the water that is dripping can cause mold. So it's very well sustainable to move and clean the refrigerator to see how is the area and how is the floor that the refrigerator is on that we can clean these things. Is a question, Lerina, or I need to continue? No questions okay. right now. Thank you. So the normal size of the fan has decreased according to the years. I don't know if some of you have remembered how big they used to be, and now the size has diminished and the capacity of air ventilation has increased for those that we have no problems like the one that we're going to see in the right side of the screen that has small in the ceiling because of the humidity of the bathroom. This is the area that has high, higher humidity. So for building specifications, the, when we are doing a remodeling and things like that, they need to put the proper uh, boards and they need to proper the proper equipment to avoid this. If not, we are going to be spending a lot of money. If the equipment is there appropriate, the individual and homeowner will be saving huge amount of money for this. How we going to make the family function healthy and how we can speak everyone in the same English, we understand each other. It's a little complicated and takes time to do it. So for simple communication, we always have a argument. And have a healthy argument is good. Sadly, when we have arguments that are not healthy. So there are certain things that we can do and we cannot do in communication. One of the first things that we can avoid is criticism, contempt, when we are ignoring the other individual, when we defend all the things and, and phrases that we use, and we went ignoring completely the individual with the stonewalling. These are basis in psychology, so those are the things that we should be avoiding when we are talking to the individuals that live inside of the house. I don't know if you guys are sharing your house with your spouses, with your kids, with in-laws. So those are one of the four uh, don'ts that we should be avoiding. What are the things that we need to do? Calm down if somebody wants to increase their conditioner or open the windows, depending of the season that we are. It's been not essentially trying to hear their argument and trying to see how we can find a level, use a specific complaints. When we are talking to somebody, validate to make the individual know that we understand what they're saying and learn these skills will be your life and the relationship even with your kids and with your partner more easier. In Manatee County, we have a specific class in relationship where we are teaching 
these and too many more skills to help you with that in communication. There are certain rules for constructive conflict, as I already mentioned. So we need to practice these tools very easier and frequently that we can have a win-win and we can learn to calm ourselves and our partners and uh, avoid conflict because the conflict always is going to come back. And right now during the stress anxiety that we are living due to COVID-19, that's the reason of anxiety and stress. If we practice this, your level of anxiety will start to decrease and you're going to have something that is called mindfulness and will help you with that. What are the family's operations and routines that uh, we can find these communications and make our house more sustainable? So making, I want to give you a series of tips that you guys can implement. The first one is a writing schedule that we know when somebody is going to put the garbage out, when they're going to be the recycle, when it's way to uh, clean, and the cleaning uh, certain uh, areas of the house. If we have this, the schedule, everyone on the house will know how can help us to make the environment better. Prepare diners together and prepare diners during the, during the week. In the website, we, uh, Family and Consumer Science posts a blog that has a schedule to make the diners for the week and sometimes for the month. So you can schedule what you guys are going to be eating and you can involve your kids in this preparation of the meals and kids can help you with uh, setting tables, uh, preparation, cutting vegetables, cutting things like that to help you with this and integrate the family as a as an unit. Maintain a home garden. This one is very sustainable. Manatee County and Sarasota Station has a program that is called Master Gardeners. They can, and we have as well the community gardens. If you want to maintain a home garden, you're going to be more sustainable because you are going to be growing you, the food that you're going to be consuming. And you are going to see what kind of pesticides and you are using in those. That will be more helpful for you. And in the end of the season, you can have vary your recipes and your preparations for the week according to what you have in your garden. We have questions? None at the moment. Thank you. The fourth tip is uh, right now in this uh, century, we have a lot of distractions. We are working. So now we are working from home, so we need to be using our computer, we need to be using our phone, kids are at home, they are in the Xbox, they are in Wi-Fi, they are on all these uh, electronic devices. Let's try to make dinner and mealtime a family. Like, used to be the portrays in the 60s, and everybody come to the house, come to the table, and sit together and speak. This is the time of the day that we can find to reconnect and make that part of our routine as well. As a family, we need to have a special routine. This one is one of the ones that help us with that. And any kind of electronic is a distraction during the meal time. Something I want to mention. Here in America, we have very big, uh, big size of portions. As you can hear from my accent, I'm, English is my third language. So I, I was born in Colombia, South America. I was used to the small, small portions. When I came here for the first time and I see the size of the place, I asked the server, how many people is going to be sharing this place with me? And she said, no, it's only for you. So that's a, a surprise. Everything is very big. We need to start to reduce the amount of food that we put in the plate. Sometimes like the cake that looks there looks yummy, it's, it, it, it's chocolate, we're going to eat it, but a sliver and a small size of the cake will be enough for us. 
and not all the case. Why? Because sadly, we live in one of the countries that has more obesity and cardiovascular disease. And this kind of eating doesn't help us and will have increment our expense using medical uh, and hospitalization help for us. So please try to have a small portion when we are doing our servings. Something good that we can plan with the kids and even with the pets is every time that we finish to eat, there's going to have a world to increase digestion. So at night, when you have finished the dinner time, there is a very way to do exercise. You're going to have a walk with your family around your neighborhood and your digestion system will be increasing and will be very good for you. The kids can tell you what they were doing and accomplished and you can start talking to the kids as well. During this time, that is a good option, have current information, but for sources that you relate to. And could be a subject that you can discuss after dinner when you are walking. Please try to have sources that have the facts, that you have the right information. And avoid to use and see the news all the time because your level of stress is going to be increased and be higher to the roof and that's not going to help you with your anxiety and stress level. And spending and sustainability as well, your bill expense is going to be increased, you need to go to the doctor more frequently. Tip number eight, let's use the time of telecommunication devices, testing, internet, cell phones. There are certain schedules that we can, during the day, even though that we are working, that we can check those and not be connecting all the time. Tip number nine, when we need to have to try to maintain the life out, when somebody is in, no, in an area of the house and the, this area is empty, let's remember, put the lights out, especially for children because they're going to be more smoothing for their sleeping and tranquility and the spending of the bill in consumption for your meter outside of your house, going to be lower as well, the consumption of kilowatts in your house for electricity consumed in your household. Tip number 10, we need to have minimum eight hours of sleep. If we don't have that, levels of anxiety, stress, we are going to be grumpy the following day, we are not going to be, we're going to be grouchy, we don't want to do our job, Kids as well, they don't want to do nothing like that. So have a time to rest. That is minimum eight hours for an adult, and it depends on the age of the kid. Between 10 to 12 hours is something that we can help with the peace in the household as well. If somebody that don't have a good rest, the following day, everybody is going to be arguing, and it's not good for the environment in of your house. Something that we need to do is as well as stretching that helps with the joints and with your posture as well with your breathing and mindfulness and that's something that we can do sometimes maybe in the morning when we just wake up or before that we are going to bed. It depends on your schedule how you want to do it. If somebody wants to do exercise, that is better, but it's minimum 15 minutes of stretching exercise per day. It's very good when we are start to gain a, over the 30 years old. So if somebody is older than that, this time increase longer. How are we going to have the conservation of energy in the house? How are we going to reduce the cost of everything and make our uh, house a uh, Safety in a, clear, in a clear operation way. Now we're going to discuss in total 17 tips that you guys can use to do this. There are questions, Hilderina? Yes, um, Armando is actually wondering, is it better to eat multiple small portions during the day or three good servings? According to how, 
there is a difference between males and females. The metabolism of the male is faster than the female. So a small portion during the day will be better for them. And even somebody that wants to reduce uh, weight, yes, that will, be the, that will be the answer. That you can have a breakfast, a snack, lunch, a snack, dinner. So that will be helping you. And of course, remember me, remember drink water. Males need to drink 11 glasses of water per day. Females, we need to drink nine glasses of water per day because hydration is something else that helps with uh, our digestion system. Okay, great, that's all. Thank you. So we can see with the tips for home energy conservation. Now, the majority of equipments sell in the retails like Home Depot and Lowe's and anyone that you want to use, needs to have a sticker that is energy star. In that way, you're going to be assured that you are saving in your expenses monthly and year and how fast you're going to recuperate the investment that you do for that uh, new investment. So one of the things I suggest that you check is your water heater. The water heater installation and how you maintain and do maintenance per year that helps with that is one of the things that we, we're looking. If you guys have a swimming pool and the kids like the picture in the right are taking showers outside before going inside of the house, that, will, that is a good alternative as well. But remember the amount of times that somebody is taking showers, the bill increase as well. Something that we need to see is how insulated is your water heater and the copper pipes. The water heater I mentioned with the energy star symbol has that insulation on it, so you don't need to worry for that. Something that we need to worry is the copper pipes that are inside of the house. Buildings they have a, been built before 1985, and after 1985, there are two different kind of pipes. So those are the ones that uh, we need to be, as a homeowner, and sometimes as a renter, being very aware of these, the kind of uh, pipes that are under our household know when we're going to have an issue and they broke down. How are the energy savings options? One of the things that we can do is adjust the temperature in the water heater. Insulate the tank if it's something that you have a... There are individuals that sometimes when you ask them how long do you have your tank, and a few of the participants in my classes have mentioned me, Oh, my tank is like 10 years old. So I ask, how frequently have you doing maintenance on it? Oh, I have never touched it. Those are things that we need to be very careful because this tank needs to have a maintenance one time per year. And we need to flush the tank. That's the one the thing that we need to do one time per year. Install heat traps as well on it. It's one of the ways that you can have energy saving options. The new water heaters I was mentioned, they are very high efficiency. So they have a good uh, gas condensation, water heaters, the heat pads, and the heat pump waters are faster in functionality compared to a tank that has been in your house and installed 10 years ago. When you're going to put the both systems, you, the new uh, tank going to be higher efficiency compared to the other tanks. And you're going to see as well in your consumption of energy and your consumption of uh, water in your house. Solar and heating system. If somebody has the alternative to install those, great. But remember that these are very expensive and a lot of people don't want to invest all this money for that and you need to see the cost effect of your buy. How many months, how many tax credits, how many months you're going to be saving and recuperate your investment. So those are things that we need to see that, uh, from the point of view in finances. 
you need to see, okay, the investment I'm doing right now is this one. How many months, how many weeks I'm going to recuperate that investment? I'm going to be helping me with my water bill and with my energy bill. Tip number three, all the outlets and boxes need to be ice insulated. So if you guys buy a new house and we only are painting the house and we are not going to check in those outlets and when the person that is painting the house are not removing, we cannot see if those are really electrical insulated. Why? Because the wiring and anything inside of that can cause fire. So we need to check those and remove those and check those as well. The new brands are more, uh, came with that insulation and protect the housing for uh, uh, firing as well. All the receptacles needs to be half covered when we are living with kids that are very, very small because they can put the fingers or any of object inside of those. So put those covers to replace uh, existing uh, covers is an option that helps you as well to save energy. How, what kind of ways we can use to make our house more comfortable and uh, cooler? I want to plug here the area that Mitchell works that is the mobile irrigation system and the horticulture area. Know which plants are in your yard. And if the plant of the tree is in the right area for irrigation and for provide chatting to your house, is the better way to do it. So I suggest that you can schedule a free uh, consultation with a mobile irrigation system that provides that kind of a report to you. They're going to see how many heads of irrigation system are in your house, if there are the, if there are the right way to use that are using properly, and what kind of plants do you have, and they're going to give you suggestions. So please, Sarasota County has this option as well. I suggest that you can check that as well. Ventilation. Ventilation. When we are able to open the windows, if the temperature goes down during the month of uh, January, if you want to open the windows, perfect. But if you want to start to open the windows when it's July, August, the humidity level is going to go inside of the house, so it's not very good to do that very frequently, at least that you are outside and everybody's outside of the house. The use of proper uh, ventilation fans in the house helps with that as well. So decrease your use of air conditioner. So fans. It depends on the kind of fans that you have inside of your house, in the, in the areas. The fan that you have in the kitchen stall is completely different to the one that you have in the living room. The living room fan is a little bigger and it's going to provide a cooling system for the people and animals that you have inside of the house so and help to move the air from room to room. So have installed fans in the house here in Florida is very, very helpful to move the air around the house as well. Insulation. A lot of individuals don't know if the house is insulated or not, and they don't know what kind of insulation they have. So one way to save a, a, in a, your heating and cooling and electricity is this one, insulation. It depends on the one that you have. We can plan to, if you're moving to a new area, you, do, you want to do a fixing up of your a house, you can check how is the attic space, what kind of insulation do you have, the type of insulation that you can use. So that is a good area and saving tip to do that to save money as well. How we are going to conservation the house? As I mentioned you, there are certain areas in your house that help you with that. I was talking about 
the bathroom. In the bathroom, you can see there are areas that like the bathtub, the toilet, the sink, the fence, the kind of fixtures that you have help you with the heating and cooling of the house. So you can uh, save 20% on heating and cooling. And if you start to add in those savings, could be 10% of your total annual energy bill. In the living room, if you have fan, if you can, uh, the, uh, ventilation systems that you have in the roof, in the garage, what kind of water heater do you have installed? I saw outside of your house, if you have a irrigation system, what kind of irrigation system are you using? If you have a, a swimming pool, what kind of a heating are you using for that pool as well? Kitchen, what kind of equipment do you have in the kitchen? If those are energy stars, the majority of equipment right now that are you can use to remodel our energy savers. Something as well I forget to mention in the bathroom is every time that you remodel and change your toilet, you can apply for a, um, the government, the Manatee County government give you a feedback for a rebate every time that you change the toilet so that is something that you can can help us with uh, the remodelation of the bathroom as well. Your insurance. The insurance in our house is going to decrease as well for the kind of electrodomestics that we have inside of the house. Yes, they check if your refrigerator, if your uh, oven, dishwasher, water heater, AC unit are energy star and that decrease your the amount of money that you are spending for your uh, insurance as well. Questions, Elderina? We have questions? Yep, we've got two questions. Um, so Ken is wondering, uh, in relation to how many glasses of water you should drink per day, mm -hmm. how mm -hmm. many liquid ounces are considered to be one glass? Eight ounces. Eight, eight ounces. ounces? Yes, eight ounces of water, yeah. And, then, and believe um, me, you can drink all the water that you have. It's very cool because it helps with your heart, helps with your digestion, helps with not only with cholesterol, metabolism, your skin, helps with a lot of stuff. So if you drink a little more than six to seven ounces of water, the better for you. Yes, the eight is the minimum. <laughs> yeah, no, I and mean, you should not have drinking eight. You need to, if you are a male, you need to drink 11 ounces of eight glasses, 11 eight ounces glasses of water during yes, the day. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. And then Armando is wondering, during the summer months, is it better to leave the fan on in a room with the AC, even if you're not there? And what about the use of um, electricity trade-off? The new fans the wiring that they have and the connection they have uh, consume less uh, energy balls than the older ones. If you have a fan or you have a, a, a house that the fan, as I mentioned, like the water heater is 10, 15 years old, the sufficiency of the fan is going to be lower compared to a fan that you buy this year out of the year before in wiring and everything the quality is going to be better. So even if you are not in the room and you left the, uh, if you, for example, are in the living room and go to your room and you left the fan running on, that's going to be a lot of increment of a, a utilization of energy for short periods of time and going to be cooling down the area of the living room. If somebody else is in the living room, your wife, your kids, your pets, the fan will be running and cool down the individuals that are in the other uh, area that you just left. And when you come back from the room to the living room, the area, the air quality and cooling, you're going to feel the sensation in your skin. It's going to be a little cooler compared to when you went to your room. Okay. Thank you. I mentioned you about insulation. If 
you upgrade your insulation. This is one of the new systems in the picture. You guys are going to be seeing the one that are using the popcorn system that it blocks the any kind of feature in the attic better. You can save something around four hundred dollars per year if you have a house that is one thousand eight hundred square foot home. It depends of the square foot of the house the insulation that they need to do as well. Air conditioner is very in this as well. They need to see how many square foot you have to keep you the proper AC unit that you require. But this one is of the top tips that we need to be sharing. Like in my house, when I bought my, my house, the first thing that we did was a put an upgrade the insulation to do that as well. Let us fit. There are different types of insulation. So in the picture here, you can see how somebody is installing the, the phone in place compared to the popcorn that you were using in the past picture. And there are blankets and love fields and rigid board. The foam and the popcorn is one of the most common used right now. So those, it depends on your interest and how expensive is one compared to the other, you can choose the proper type of insulation for you. What kind of that work we have in the house? That work is for everything that is like air conditioner or ventilation in the house and needs to have proper mastic. If you buy a new air conditioner and the company doesn't uh, put mastic and correctly put a uh, sealing the vents in the area of your house, the circulation in the air is not working. And you invest a lot of money for an equipment that is not doing proper uh, work inside of your house. So all these should be properly mastic and covered. That's something that we need to start to check in in the attic if we can do. If we have an air conditioner unit, we need to do a maintenance. This maintenance needs to be minimum annually. Some companies have a maintenance offers for two or three times per year. It depends on you because there are contracts and those things are a little expensive, but minimum you need to have one per year. They need to check all your wiring. They need to check how are your condenser, how is your, everything is working there. If they have the proper uh, wiring and everything is, is, is working because the expense to renew an air conditioner, those are expensive. And as I mentioned before, it depends on the size of your house. So the cost of a new, new unit could be something from 3,000 to seven, eight, 9,000 depends on the square foot of your house. Something that we need to do that with our unit is this. This is something that we need to do very, very frequently. A lot of people recommend sometimes every month, every two months, you need to change your filter. There are different kind of filters and air, air conditioner filters. If you have somebody in your house that have allergies, there are different kind of filters for those as well. And you can install and check. In the picture, you're going to see the right side, the filter is white. That is the color of a new filter. The picture on the left, it is gray. This uh, filter needs to be changed. It's completely dirty, and you are not having the proper ventilation in your area. So you need to check that as well. It's something that as a homeowner or renter individual, we need to do ourselves. A company that's not going to do for you and you can save money doing that away. You don't want to pay for a maintenance guy to come to check only your filters. You can go to any store to buy a new filter. Walmart, Home Depot, Lowe's has those kind of filters. And even you can order those online. But something I need to mention, you need to have the right proper size of your unit. So you need to read in the size of the filter, the proper uh, size of the filter. We have questions, Olivia? Yep. Um, Jean is wondering, how does a filter whistle work? The, 
oh, inside of the air handler, outside of the air handler, everything that goes the air is trapped for the filter. So inside of your house, if you had a pet, if you have a dog, if you have a dust, is something that we have as well, all those things start to circulate in the room. So the filter traps all that before going inside of the air handler. is the piece that is inside of your house. The condenser is outside of your house. If you live in a mobile home, you're going to have a bigger unit outside of your house. So the filter is like the barrier that anything of those particles going to be inside of the unit and create more damage for you and for your uh, uh, family. And uh, everything, that when we are in, 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 in an environment, in a room, in an office, in a house, we cannot see a lot of the particles that are flying like dust, dust mites, things like that. So the filter captures all the stuff. Hair, things that we can see, that we cannot see with the eye, the filter capture those. And then how does the whistle play its part when you add that to the filter? The whistle starts to, the thickness when the gray start with the, all the materials start to be stuck in the filter, the whistle sounds and let you know it's time to change the filter. Oh, okay. But the new, the new ways to change the filter is a, for the eye that you can see the difference in the color. If the filter is very great, you need to be changed. If it's white, it's perfect, it's new, continue working. Okay, interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Magnetic filters in the floor. So how we want to save energy by reducing air and heat loss when we place over the dog filter slot. We put those one and it's one of the alternatives that help us to save uh, money as well. And this one is very useful is inside of the house when we have uh, electronics, we are using power strips. We live in Florida, we have a lot of lighting, we have a lot of storms, we can lose electricity at any moment, and we don't want that any type of uh, electrodomestic that we have burned out. So the power strips help us with keeping and maintaining longer the expensive of the electronics as well. The thermostat. Reduce the water heating in the thermostat. stack. This needs to have the setting in 120 degrees Fahrenheit of less. It's how we uh, save the water uh, temperature setting in those. And please don't want to change it all the time. If we are in the winter and now we are in the summer, we want to change it. That is not a good, it's, it's no proper way to do it. Set it in a, one setting and don't change it all the time. Hey, Nellie? Yes. It's 12.45, and that's kind of when we're wrapping it up. So okay. um, you are at a good spot there with the thermostat and, um, you know, letting people know to not change it too dramatically. Um, are you in a place that you can wrap up? I almost heard about yes, I can wrap up, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. If, if somebody has any, any other question, feel free to send us an email. Or call, call the office of Sarasota Manatee Extension Office. Thank do, you. Do you have a slide that has your contact information on it that you can? I put it. To? I put it in the. In, in, let me go. It's the first one. It's in the. It's the beginning one. So okay. I need to go back to that one. So hold on. Okay. Okay. Well, in the meantime, I'll thank everybody yeah, for yeah. joining us, and thanks for all the great questions. We really appreciate it. Um, Sarasota County also has a great family and consumer services program going on. Um, and, and we have one as well here in Manatee County with Nellie at the lead of that. So um, thank you, Nellie. And thank you, Elderina, for your help with fielding the questions. Uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you, our pleasure. And so please look forward to um, 
please join us next week. We look forward to having a livestock and rangeland sustainability uh, next month. And you can find these webinars um, on YouTube at both the Manatee and Sarasota County YouTube page. So uh, please look for those on our YouTube pages and um, hopefully you'll join us again. Thank you very much.